Testing, testing. Testing. Is this thing on? Oh, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2018, 5778. Welcome to the 36 commencement exercises of the Rabbi Moshe H. Levinson Upper School of the Melvin J. Berman Hebrew Academy. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight for this wonderful celebratory occasion. To facilitate everyone's enjoyment of tonight's program, we ask that you please silence your cell phones and all other electronic devices at this time. Graduates? <laughs> and now, you guys ready? Okay, and now, please rise for the National Anthem and Hatikva. Thank you to our tech crew. <laughs> Dear parents, grandparents, 
teachers and friends, welcome to the commencement exercises for the class of 2018. I'd like to recognize and thank the community rabbis for coming celebrate with us. Rabbi Antin, Rabbi Weinberg, Rabbi Hertzfeld, Rabbi Volvovsky, Rabbi Rosenbaum, and Rabbi Topolowsky. And a special shout out to Rabbi Levitt for coming in from Brooklyn. <laughs> special greetings to Nomer Burdett, who's watching on live stream, and Shani Kugler, who I believe is here tonight. Their father, Rabbi Moshe, Moshe H. Levinson, who's one of the founders of the school, and the upper school proudly bears his name. I'd also like to recognize State Senator Roger Mano, who is with us tonight. Senator Mano has been a great friend to the school and the community. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Dear Class of 2018, I have enjoyed being on this journey with you for the last 12 years. And as your time and my time at Berman comes to an end, this is my opportunity to impart some advice that you will remember for the rest of your lives, or at least until Kobe starts speaking. <laughs> I heard a story recently of an encounter between Americans and Canadians in the Atlantic Ocean. Recognizing that they were on course to crash into each other, the American captain radioed to the Canadians and advised them to turn 15 degrees to the north. The Canadians responded by recommending that the Americans turn 15 to the degrees to the south instead. A little indignant, the American captain got back on the radio and replied, this is the captain of a US Navy ship. I say again, divert your course. Surprisingly, the mild-mannered Canadians insisted, no, sir, you must divert your course. At this point, the American captain became angry and responded, this is the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln in the United States Atlantic Fleet. We are accompanied by three destroyers, three cruisers, and numerous support vessels. I demand that you change your course 15 degrees north. That's one five degrees north. Or countermeasures will be taken to ensure the safety of this ship. Canadians responded, this is a lighthouse, your call. <laughs> so the first piece, first piece of advice I will give you is, understand when you are asking a lighthouse to move and come up with a better plan. My second piece of advice, when you're in Washington, Pretend you're a Washington Capitals fan. Hashtag all caps. I think we have about 20 minutes till the game starts. You might still be listening to me. Number three. Well, I'm actually not sure you need much advice from me. No, you're not perfect. Not yet, anyway. But what you have shown, both individually and collectively, is the capacity to grow, to learn, to respond to challenges, to look at your environment and use your wisdom to change yourselves and change your environment for the better. I remember some of you would come over to the house on Friday night and mutter the same three words week after week. Is Tony here? <laughs> now, you stay and chat for a bit, have an actual conversation. Sometimes he even asks for leftover dessert. I remember some of you in our 8th grade Algebra 1 class creating an adorably geeky class song, Difference of Squares, a tradition passed down to future generations of algebra students. And then, seemingly in a flash, you were making Mrs. Roberts giddy with your performance in her AP Cal class. I remember the grade's first transplant from Baltimore who could talk only about the Ravens when he arrived. And now, now he's expanded his repertoire to include the Celtics and Warriors as well. <laughs> I remember the younger, young and eager freshman taking Rabbi Kosowski's Talmud class for the first time. And now, look how grown up you are as his Shana Dalad cohort. <laughs> I remember my 10th grade Toshba class. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, I remember the class. Shout out to Toshba5776. I remember a basketball player who didn't make the PVAC team in middle school and then became the star of the varsity. I remember a young lady who was timid and uncertain in lower school, and after finding her passion, she has become more adept, talented, and forceful than she ever would have believed. I remember a new ninth grader who immediately bargained for a 3D printer for the school. Okay, well, he hasn't changed that much. <laughs> I remember a class that began as one of the smallest, absorbed an unusually high number of transfers from HDS, Rambam, Torah School, Yeshiva, and Public School. Then, alas, shrank to become the, sm become the smallest again, and yet remained one of the strongest and probably the most cohesive grade in the school. I remember a freshman class on the mission to Israel that was comprised largely of followers that has now turned into a class that has become leaders in the classroom, in the Beit Midrash, in sports, in theater, in student council, in model UN, in mock trial, in art, in chesed, really everywhere. And come August, that group of leaders will be spending the next year studying in Israel in record numbers. So, I am not really sure what headmasterly or fatherly advice I can give you. You have learned what it means to grow as people, as Jews, as learners. You have met challenges and thrived. You have figured out how to make opportunities where they didn't previously exist and to take advantage of opportunities that already did. You have learned the skills to study Torah and Talmud for the rest of your lives, to ask probing and insightful questions, to navigate the digital world you are both inheriting and creating. The captain of the USS Abraham Lincoln met an adversary and assuming that he knew everything about it, demanded a particular course of action. You know better. You know how to ask the right questions, figure out your environment, work with other people, and compromise when necessary. Well, most of you know how to compromise. So no more advice, just a bracha. May you always keep learning, keep humble, keep growing, and keep making your world a better place. Mazal tov and congratulations. community rabbis, teachers, parents, and grandparents. This week's Parsha, Parshat Shlach, opens with the famous sin of the spies. Moshe sent spies to Israel, as per God's request, to report on the land. Spoiler alert, things do not go well. The spies return from their mission, a free to wage war for the promised land. They tell B'nai Israel that Israel's inhabitants are too powerful and cities are well fortified. These findings create national panic. B'nai shall despair at the prospect of going to such a dangerous place, and they actually begin plans to return to Egypt. However, a voice of clarity emerges amidst the panic. In Perak Yod Gimel, Pasuk Lamed, chapter 13, verse 30, it says, Vayas kaliv ata'am al Moshe vayomer alo na'ale vayarshnu ota ki yachol nuchala. Kaliv takes initiative and silences the nation. He reassures them that they will indeed go up to Israel and inherit it. This Pasuk seems strange to me. In my mind, Kaliv and Yehoshua are bound together, a package. I was surprised to read that Kaliv actually addresses the people alone. It is not until the next parak, Yehoshua and Kaliv tear their clothes and address the nation together. Here, they present as the united front I was familiar with and expecting in chapter 13. As I continued reading the Parsha, I noticed that Kaliv is singled out in another significant manner. God desires to destroy all of B'nai Israel after they completely lose faith in him and their ability to enter Israel. Moshe begs Hashem not to go through with his plan, and Hashem decides to punish the nation less severely. However, God singles out Kaliv and says that he will enter Israel with a new generation because of his Ruach Acharet, his special spirit. Here too, Yehoshua miss is missing. It's all about Kaliv. What motivates Kaliv to stand up to the nation even when he is alone? What is this special spirit that God attributes to him? The Shadal comments on Perak Yod Gimel, Pasuk Lamed, when Kaliv silences the nation alone. 
he says that as the assistant to Moshe, it was obvious that Yehoshua would remain quiet in respect to his teacher. Consequently, Yehoshua only steps in after Moshe and Aaron have given up, have fallen on their faces. Then he understands that he must respond in order to protect Moshe from rebellion. In contrast, Caliph is not bound to Moshe. He has the freedom to act on his own, to respond when he sees chaos unfolding. Caliph is portrayed as a strong, independent leader who instantly rebuts the spy's negative report of the land. Caliph risks the wrath of the other spies who went on the mission with him. Caliph risks the wrath of the people who are terrified by the negative reports. Caliph understood that standing up for the truth was crucial, even if it meant putting his own leadership at risk. In this light, Caliph truly does display a special spirit, a ruach The initiative and bold action that Caliph exhibits during the spy incident merits Caliph a reward that Yehoshua does not merit in the same way. Caliph's reaction highlights his desire to return to Israel and his faith in B'nai Israel's ability to successfully enter the land. Accordingly, his reward is to enter the land and inherit it for his descendants. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs applies Stanford University psychologist Carol Dweck's work on growth and fixed mindsets to the spies and their respective actions. Kalev, according to Dr. Dweck's terminology, has a clear growth mindset. He comes from the tribe of Yehuda. Yehuda stands up to his brothers and convinces them to throw Yosef in a pit rather than kill him. Nachshon ben Aminadav, another descendant of Yehuda, is the first to jump into the Red Sea with faith in God that it would split. Yehuda is a family that stands up for their beliefs even when it comes at a personal risk. Kalev inherits the same growth mindset from his family and continues to t- take risks in order to do the right thing. He has the courage to speak up as an individual because he does not fear failure. Kalev also recognizes that with Hashem's help, B'nai Israel cannot fail. God acknowledges this unique trait when he singles out Kalev for his special spirit. Our parents, grandparents, and teachers at Berman have invested so much in who we are as individuals. They have taught us that we should be proud of our heritage and know who we are. As we advance into the next stages of our lives, we will each face our own Kalev moments, where we stand alone in our beliefs. When we need to speak up for what is right and true with God's help and our traditions to guide us, we will have the strength to do so. And for that, we must thank all of you who have invested in our education, supported our Torah learning, and exemplified lives filled with values. I am positive that I've heard the following comment in class every year for the past 10 years. How is this stuff ever going to help me in life? We're sitting in math class learning about geometric shapes. Or maybe we're in history class learning about the Industrial Revolution during the late 18th century. And we think to ourselves, of what value is this information? In one of our senior seminars, we learned how expensive it is to live a modern Orthodox life paying for day schools, camps, and maybe even Pesach programs. Why are we sitting here reading poetry or trying to remember the years of the French Revolution? Shouldn't we be learning something that will help us succeed in our careers and make money? (laughs) The least satisfying answer to why we are learning this has always been, you need to learn this material to get a good grade, and then to get into college, and then to get a good job. As we are about to embark on our adult lives, I'd like to look at this differently. Learning is the foundation for creative thinking and problem solving. As Rabbi Yoshua says in Chagiga, without Chiddush, creative insight, there is no base midrash. Rabbi Soloveitchik, in his famous essay, Lonely Man of Faith, articulates this important perspective on how we see the world. One of our primary goals in life, and what the Rav refers to as Adam One, is using our personal creativity and adaptiveness to tackle the world's challenges. We each have a mission to impact the world through our unique skills and abilities. This role is not usually achieved through a singular path. Rather, it is one accomplished through interdisciplinary study. The ability to acquire knowledge, information, and skills from an array of experiences is what enables us to reach this higher goal. Based on this philosophy, we should not view education in purely practical terms, 
for the sake of advancing our professional careers. Indeed, education should not be limited to our K-12 or college years, or to the classroom alone for that matter. We must become lifelong learners, our own best teachers. Learning across academic disciplines, for example, studying history and literature, art and psychology, helps us think flexibly, critically, and creatively. This enables us to lead meaningful lives as engaged citizens of our communities and the globe. Adam Grant, in his book Originals, talks about Warby Parker, a billion dollar company created by his students. The eyewear company had four founders. In college, one majored in bioengineering, another studied history, another economics, and the last international studies. Any one of them could not have created the company alone, but together with their breadth of knowledge and inspiration, they could build one of the most innovative companies in the world. Anachno roim et otoha nyan beparshat hashavua. Parshat shlach et ha'ert et achad ma'atayot ha'gadolot beoter shel b'nei Yisrael bechol ha'historia. Shehi ha'nisayon ha'kushel shalahem la'tor et eretz Yisrael. Hasiba ha'ikarit shebigalala chatu b'nei Yisrael. Hasiba shemayut kuim b'amidbar b'meshech arba'im shana ha'ita ha'i afsharut shalahem l'irot et kocho shal ha'kodesh baruchu. B'mkom l'irot et yecholet Hashem the importance of being a flexible thinker is evident in this week's Parsha. In Parsha Shlach, we see one of the Jewish people's biggest mistakes in all of history. Their inability to trust in the powers of Hashem and their choice to follow the tempting narrative of the Meraglim delayed their entry into Israel by 40 years. The key reason why they failed was because they could not access their imaginations. They could not get past their practical minds to creatively problem solve. But as we see throughout the rest of the Torah, Bnei Israel learn how to trust in Hashem and broaden their perspectives. They take the lessons that they learn from Moshe and the earlier generation and employ them in their lives. With this enhanced critical and flexible thinking, they're finally able to accomplish their highest goal and enter the Holy Land of Israel. In some ways, our class was faced with a very similar situation to that of Bnei Israel in the desert. First of all, this journey through high school was very long and challenging. For some of us, high school felt like it was actually going on for 40 years. Second, for Bnei Israel, there was a cloud in the sky that would tell them every time they had to pack up and move. Berman has really loud beeping noises in the hallway that do the same. <laughs> and most significantly, Berman, Bnei Israel, sorry, often lacked water. There are random times when Berman's water fountains simply do not work. In fact, I've seen freshmen actually hitting the fountains with their water bottles in an effort to fix them. In all seriousness, as we finish high school and move into the real world, Israel, college, and beyond, my hope for all of us is that we emulate the new generation of Bnei Israel and fulfill our mission. I know we will bring insight and creativity to just about every area of life because we as a class do not just succeed in terms of traditional metrics. Rather, we learn from each other's unique talents to broaden our minds and expand our capabilities. Whether it's Model UN, mock trial, sports, art, or theater, we've excelled and grown from the diversity of our experiences. We are grateful to our parents, school, and community for all the lessons that they have taught us and continue to teach us. Most of all, we are grateful to Hashem for the opportunity to be alive and carry out the full measure of our avoda. Class of 2018, we are all going to do incredible things in the real world, but we are also going to take the things we learn from each step of the way and apply them to help ourselves grow as creative, insightful individuals in our Judaism and in all facets of life. Thank you.
May 7th, 1946, in a bombed out building in Ihanbasi, Tokyo, Akio Morita and a friend founded a small company, Tokyo Tsusin Kogyo. From its small beginnings as a radio repair shop, it grew into a company that today has over $77 billion per year in revenues. The company is now one of the top consumer electronics manufacturers worldwide and also runs the largest music entertainment business in the world. Now, perhaps you've never heard of the name Tokyo Tsusin Kogyo, but you've definitely heard the name they adopted in 1958, Sony Corporation. Graduates, I'd like to share with you a story that Mr. Morita was fond of telling. Two shoe salesmen from competing companies arrived in a remote area in Africa, their new sales territories. Three days after they arrived, the first salesman wires back to the main office. There are no sales prospects here, and I'm returning home immediately. The people here do not wear shoes. Meanwhile, no one heard a word from the second salesman at all until two weeks later when a fat envelope sent via airmail arrived at the main office. 50 orders are enclosed, read the note from the salesman. Prospects are unlimited. Nobody here has any shoes. You see, two people can look at the same situation and each see something so different. This Shabbat we will read Parshat Shlach, which begins with the story of the Miraglim, the 12 spies. Shira in her Devar Torah quoted Perak Yud Gimel, Pasuk Lamed, chapter 13, verse 30, in which the Torah relates the response of Kalev and also Yeshua upon their return. Vayahas Kalev ta'am el Moshe, vayomer alo na'aleh, which in my modern day translation means, Kalev quieted the people down before Moshe and he said, guys, let's do this. Go up and get this land because we can make it happen. While the other spies said, nope, can't do it. We can't go up against those people because they're stronger than us. The stipler on Rabbi Yisrael Yaakov Kanyevsky offers an interesting explanation in his classic work, Birkat Peretz. Twelve men, leaders, all looking at the same facts. They all saw the same land, but what the ten naysayers saw was different than what Kali ben Yoshua saw. According to the Medrash, the spies saw many funerals while they were scouting the land. Rav Kanyeski writes, that God did this for the benefit of the spies. That uh, the people in the land would be occupied with this burial and with their suffering, and they wouldn't notice the Miraglim. She'ilu not new lev shehem Miraglim badai hayu harginotam. That if these people were not involved in burying in these burials, they would have noticed the spies and they would have certainly killed them. But what did the ten spies think? They didn't say, "Wow, God must really be on our side here." No, they said, this is a horrible land that swallows its inhabitants. And Rav Kanyevsky concludes, Ki In the way in which a person wants to go, he is drawn. In a tragic case of confirmation bias, or what is sometimes called assimilation bias, the spies misinterpreted what they saw based on what they already believed. They chose to look at everything in a negative light, viewed the world through their fear and lack of faith in God. But Kalev and Yoshua chose to look at the world through a different lens. You see, when people have a negative attitude, focusing on what cannot be done and what they cannot do, as did these ten spies, all that lays before them is a path of dissatisfaction. But with a positive attitude, a mindset of faith and encouragement, how much more can and will be done? We often do not get to choose the challenges that life brings us. We do not control much of the circumstances of our lives but we do get to choose our perspective. In the words of Viktor Frankl, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Graduates, you and I arrived at the Berman Upper School at the same time, and I think it's safe to say that none of us really knew what to expect, and none of us knew exactly what we were doing. But through hard work, through encouraging each other and working together, and through a positive attitude, here we are. We are so proud of all you have accomplished, and we know that by having faith in God and in yourselves, and by continuing to challenge yourselves to grow, you will truly accomplish great things. 
Each year, we recognize the students who have benefited from and contributed to this school for 16 years. Will the graduates who have been here since nursery two please rise? No, no, please remain standing. Kobe, Kobe, stand back up. Please remain standing as we invite those who joined you in nursery three or four or kindergarten to please rise. Now, those who joined during lower school, please rise. And middle school. Now, all of you folks can sit down. Never have a seat. Those who are bold enough to join us for upper school, please rise. And now for the shout outs. Can we get some house lights here? Ooh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. Before we acknowledge our graduates, wow, I can see everyone. This is great. There's a group of people here who deserve special recognition. Behind every student who is academically successful is a team of educated, dedicated, passionate, and driven teachers who believe in our students, who set the bar high and push our children to succeed, and who support them and encourage them every step along the way. Though they, together with our guidance staff and educational support services staff, may not be on stage, after all, we're not letting them all leave, they are the force behind this school, and we ask all of our faculty and staff from all divisions to please rise and be acknowledged. Now, I, now don't... Now, I ask the staff, don't, don't sit down yet, don't sit down yet. Let's, come on, get back up, get back up. We're, we're, we're not done with you guys yet, okay. Yeah, yeah, Jonah, okay. Now, I ask the faculty to remain standing as we, together as a grateful staff, acknowledge the parents of our graduates. The investment that you have made and the sacrifices that go along with the commitment to Jewish education are what has enabled your children to grow into the proud, articulate, accomplished, and Jewishly educated young men and women on this stage. We at Berman feel honored to have had the privilege of working with your children and in partnering with you, and I ask that you please rise to be acknowledged. And don't, don't sit down yet. Nobody sit down just yet, as I would like to ask grandparents and great-grandparents to also rise and join their children in celebrating each family's individual graduates, as well as the Shalshalat Hadoro, the eternal link in the chain of generations that cannot and will not be broken. Thank you. Now you may all be seated. Our greatest pride, no, let's keep the lights on. I need more lights, more lights, lights back on. Good, good, great, okay. Our greatest pride as a school is our alumni who embody the values of our institutions and navigate the world with the foundation formed here at the Berman Hebrew Academy. I ask all alumni of Berman Hebrew Academy, MJBHA and the Hebrew Academy of Greater Washington to please rise and be recognized. Okay, now, now you can turn off the lights. Thanks, guys. Now on to our students. As Rabbi Levitt was fond of calling it our small, mid-sized school, emphasis on small, regularly outperforms much larger schools in a variety of extracurricular competitions. Our mock trial team ended the regular season undefeated and in the playoffs, made it all the way to a draw in the semifinals against Richard Montgomery. Yeah. And our Model UN team came in third place internationally in the Yeshiva University of Model UN out of nearly 50 schools. Additionally, 
This year saw the founding of our school debate team that is now part of the Montgomery County Debate League. Lest the STEM folks feel left out, I would also like to mention our ongoing math leagues and that our mathletes participated this year in the Jewish Math Majors of America tournament for high schools at Yale University and in our first time participating are in second place. Graduates, if you competed on Mock Trial, Model UN, Debate Math Leagues, or MMaths, please rise and be acknowledged. <laughs> this was a semi-sweet year for our boys' athletics, with boys' varsity basketball, boys' varsity soccer, boys' varsity baseball, and boys' varsity volleyball, all reaching... <laughs> all reaching the semifinals in either the PVAC or ISBVL leagues. And the finals for the Frisbee Club, yes. And as for the girls' teams, in soccer, our senior captain scored goals in virtually every game, and the team made it all the way to the playoffs. In basketball, the boys attended the Sarachek tournament at Yeshiva University, qualifying for the Tier 2 championships while the girls' team qualified for the championship game at the Maimonides Tournament. <laughs> On all of our teams, our students worked hard, played hard, and had a great time. And of course, the highlight of the year was our boys' varsity team's victory, twice, over our arch rivals, athletically speaking only, of course, JDS. I would like to ask all of our student athletes to please rise and be acknowledged. <laughs> Engagement with and participation in visual and performing arts activities are, for many students, highlights of their experience here at Berman. This year, our Hadass group, the Hebrew Academy Germanic Arts Society, produced two full-length plays, including one that was entirely student-directed. Our girls' choir worked tirelessly toward a beautiful performance in January, and our visual art program through the Helene Berman Seidenfeld Visual Arts Center continued to thrive with eight students completing AP 2D design or AP 3D design and submitting portfolios to the college board. Will the students who participated in performing arts, including Hadassah and Girls Choir and our visual arts program, please rise. An Avi Chai Foundation study revealed that 40% of emerging Jewish leaders, those in their 20s or 30s, are graduates of Jewish day schools. Essentially, 12% of the Jewish population is providing 40% of the emerging leaders. We are that 12%, and these students are the disproportionate 40%. They are passionate, bright, committed to community in Israel, and their training begins right here in our school and our community. Graduates, if you have held a leadership position on student council, a grade council, or as a leader of an extracurricular club or activity, please rise and be recognized. The leadership provided by these students extends beyond the walls of our school. If you have served as a leader in an outside organization such as NCSY, Chapter Regional or National Board or B'nai Akiva, please rise. As you can see, this is a most impressive group. Please give another round of applause for this fantastic group of graduates. The, cap game, the Caps game has not started yet, so you're all good, because I'm watching back there. All right. Yeah. Rabbis, teachers, family, friends, classmates. Before I begin, I would like to thank my parents, 
<clears throat> Throughout their selfless love and determination to help me succeed, I have learned so, much, so many life lessons. Thank you for staying up with me till 1 a.m. last night for, for making the final edits on my speech. I love you. Aww. Winston Churchill once remarked that success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Well, guys, we've certainly stumbled and failed our fair share, but here we are. It's been a bumpy four years. We lost many classmates and picked up a few others. We lost a principal, and we're here for the transition pr process for a new headmaster. I won't lie, it's kind of awesome that we survived all that, but a lot of credit is due to those who led us here. We would like to thank this year's interim administration, Mrs. Sharon Roberts and Rabbi Shimi Trencher, for making the transition from a Levitz seamless and productive. Their countless hours of work have been the driving force behind an extremely successful year. We also invite everyone here to give a warm round of applause for Dr. Joshua Levison, who has led this institution fearlessly and expertly since the day he arrived at Berman. <laughs> the school will miss you, and we, the graduating class of 2018, cannot thank you enough. There is one more person who deserves a personal shout out from the senior class. Mrs. Miriam Zoggi, our, senior incre our incredible senior advisor. She, along with our senior class student council, planned an incredibly meaningful New York trip and an exhilarating and fun senior trip, which we went on just this past week. Mrs. Zoggi devoted much of her year to making sure that we are getting the attention and resources we needed to transition to the next stage of our life. Please give Ms. Zoggi a round of applause. Speaking of transition, many of us will not be in Maryland next year. 34 out of 37 graduating students, yes we are a tiny grade, will be on the plane to Israel this August. Yisrael Vitora, <laughs> Yisrael Vitora, Israel and Torah are two values that Berman has really driven home to us over the years. The message has been quite clear. Our education, our growth, our formative years don't end when we walk out those doors this evening, these doors this evening. Rather, they represent a beginning. Each and every one of us is setting out on a path built, built on the education and values that we received from Berman. Each and every one of us is going to continue growing in our appreciation for Torah and Israel and our pursuit for knowledge and virtue. Chachmat v'derech Charetz. Each of us are going off on our own path, some to yeshiva, some to seminary, and some to college. Our physical paths may never cross again. However, what unites us at this moment is precisely what will define us in 30 to 40 years from now. The common experiences we have shared here in this, in this building are permanent and unite us. We grew up together and we will continue growing up together. Only this time, we won't be in the same building. What I mean by together is that we, is that we will be united. We will stand as one, even when we aren't in the same building, city, state, or even country because we have been given these precious years to learn and grow and embody the values we learned at Berman. We are united in our responsibility, Akhrayu, to our greater community. Togetherness is not one of the five core values of Berman, but we know the Hebrew word for it anyways. Achdu. Israel Torah, wisdom, respect, and responsibility are all learned values. We have been taught about those values and we acquire knowledge and virtue throughout the process. Achdu is not learned. We don't learn how to be together. It just happens. And when it happens, it's a powerful force to be reckoned with. Think about it. The most powerful groups of people are united by common ideas and values. Armies, presidential cabinets, corporations, sports teams, let's go Yankees, the list goes on. <laughs> yes, they are fed instructions and they may be told what to do, but they are there, in the, they are there and foremost united as a group we sh and with shared goals and experiences. I'm not saying that we are on the same level as any of these groups. However, we too are united by our values and common experiences. We all struggled through, struggled through similar things, through similar problems in high school, and now we are shaped by those struggles. We persevered together. We will move up in the world together. Today, we are together in graduating, and tomorrow, we will be together in changing the world. At one point, we weren't all together. But for many of us, our journey together began in preschool, and we've been together ever since. Others have joined us in the past couple of years. 
However, I think everybody on this stage can agree that now we all know each other a little bit too well. Seriously, we need a break. Especially you, Kobe Offer. <laughs> really though, high school is hard. There isn't a person on this stage who can honestly tell you they didn't struggle at some point. I'll be honest. I, at times, struggled with academics, but in every case, the community that we forged for ourselves at Berman was always there to pick us up, pick me up. For me, it was, it was my Sulam community. They were always supportive, picked me up when I needed some direction, and helped me get to where I am today. I am the first student-selected speaker at graduation to also be a Sulam student. I couldn't have accomplished this without the help of all my Sulam peers and teachers and our awesome director, Mrs. Leanne Heller. And and technically a Sulam faculty member, but really my second mother, Mrs. Ahuva Orlovsky. Really, I cannot thank you all enough. Just as my experiences are unique to me, each of at Berman are unique to me, each of my classmates have had their own unique experiences and amazing successes that have elevated not just them, and also brought us closer together. Please, just, please indulge me for a moment as I, would like to, as I would like to recognize and highlight what each person in our class has accomplished. Avigail reshaped Chesed at Berman. Casey built a recording studio. Josh led our basketball team to our first away and home JDS win in however many years. Lior was president of NCSY Regional Board. Nessia and Shauna led our senior student council. Me too, but it's okay. Zev was president of executive council. Abby and Shawnee both, sorry. Abby and Shani both got honorable mentions in the National, in the National Statistics Poster Competition. <laughs> Adina and Bensi are the high DOS dynamic duo. Jordan Lamar and Kenny Book <laughs> spent four years making sure people knew varsity frisbee was a real and successful sport. I still like to call it a club because we didn't play for a band on the championship, but we'll forget about that. Kobe Melkin is clearly our valedictorian. Kobe Offer started working out and found his passion for how the human body works. Eliana Elkin destroyed Model UN. Eliana Lebson made a Berman board game. Eliezer made friends, he thinks, as well as being the top of his pre-cal class, taught by Rabbi Levitt. Trust me, it's a hard class. <laughs> Elisheva was our resident DJ. <laughs> Jenny was all-conference basketball honorable mention. <laughs> Jessica saved God knows how many lives as a volunteer EMT. <laughs> Nava brought a smile to literally every single person's face every day when she would sing in the halls especially me. <laughs> Nitani impacted many lives through his work in Yachad. <laughs> Ellie led our Moot Bait Team team to third place in the annual Prisma Moot Bait Din competition, as well as picking up many girls. <laughs> Reuben was the captain of our extremely successful mock trial team and our Frisbee team. Sammy was by far the most dedicated member of the boys a cappella group, the Berman Beats. SK can escape any situation that she doesn't want to deal with, including me. She can also get 100% on all of Ms. Braun's statistics tests without even studying. Sharona and Shira led Model UN and B'nai Akiva every week. Yonat Yonatan and Kobe Cohen captain our volleyball team to success. Ezra ran our school. Michelle is like the Van Gogh of our generation. 
Tawny led our mathletes to second place in the MMATHS National High School Competition at Yale University. And last but not least, Idan spent well over 100 hours each year doing chesed, and of course, learning lots and lots of Torah. <laughs> to say just one more thing about togetherness, it inspired. Dove, you're on my paper. Give me a sec. <laughs> oh yeah, you're here. Dove, insp um, Dove survived four years of his father's teachings. <laughs> that was on purpose, by the way. <laughs> to say just one more thing about togetherness, it inspires greatness. Going off as a lone wolf rarely brings success. Our great has accomplished so much because of our teamwork. We raise, more, we raise more money through our fundraisers than any class has in recent memory, which you'll hear more about from our great president, Nessie Eli. Our senior, our senior class collectively ran more than 11 extracurricular activities and held three positions on executive student council. And speaking of extracurriculars, extracurriculars four senior-led sports teams defeated JDS, two of those sports, for the first time in recent memory. I don't have to say again how much the class of 2018 has accomplished together. What I want to leave you with is one simple request. Keep an eye out. Watch the news. Read the papers. Check your Facebook and your email. Mom, you almost never respond, so please. Because one day, maybe not a year from now, maybe not five, but one day, the kids you see sitting on this stage are going to change the world together. Thank you, have a great night, and let's go Caps. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nessie Eli, and I have had the pleasure of being this year's senior class president. Thank you again to the Berman administration, parents, family, and friends. We're so happy that you are here with us to celebrate this momentous occasion. Fellow classmates, I stand before you on what is a very bittersweet day for most of us. On one hand, we have endless possibilities awaiting us on the other side of this tassel. But we are also saying goodbye to one of the most impactful and memorable chapter in our lives. We have truly been through so much together throughout these past four amazing years. As small freshmen, we boarded a plane and went on the mission to Israel. We bonded with one another and to our precious homeland. The songs of our Friday night kumzits on the Isha Torah roof overlooking the Kotel still remain in our minds. We met former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the National Capitol steps. We failed our first history test. We failed our second history test. <laughs> we got our first school computers with Wi-Fi, which we never used for Facebook or Instagram during class. <laughs> we created a drive-in movie in the school parking lot. On Shabbaton, we raced down the hallway in wheelchairs at 3 a.m. Just ask the girls, our backs are still sore. And finally, on January 6, 2018, at 10.43 p.m., we beat JDS. A true testament to the heights we were able to reach when we rise together as one and never give up. Throughout high school, the class of 2018 raised an incredible $21,000. And none of it would have been possible without every single senior on this stage taking time out of their crazy schedules to lend a hand. From selling Rosh Hashanah towels and Berman whiteout shirts, building sukkahs, jars by Danny sales, car washes, and Logba Omer carnivals, we fundraise with a passion while having the time of our lives in the process. Our clear determination and perseverance allowed our grade to raise the bar at Berman, not only athletically, but academically, and in our Jewish midot and overall energy as well. We wanted our class gift to reflect these attributes our Berman school and community have instilled in us, which we have been so blessed to be a part of. Therefore, we have decided to place numerous charging stations in the upper school hallways for students to charge their phones, laptops, and more. <laughs> in high school, especially with a 5.30, now 5, o'clock dismissal, <laughs> and a rigorous dual curriculum like ours, 
sometimes we start to feel like we're losing our battery. Besides from being extremely useful, we hope these charging stations remind Berman students to never give up when struggling with something. Look to your friends, family, and amazing teachers to charge you right back up. <laughs> we also hope this will become a place students can leave their phones when they need a break from the highly technological world we live in. Phones are great and allow us to capture the many memories we make in high school, but it is vital for us to unplug every once in a while and take it all in, or you might just miss out on those unforgettable moments and people this school has to offer. Lastly, we hope these charging stations will help you remember the class of 2018, one of the most spirited and lively classes Berman has ever seen. Because although we are about to branch out into the world, the Berman Hebrew Academy will always remain our roots, where we learned about friendship, our strengths and weaknesses, and our Torah values. I have loved growing up with each and every one of you over these past 12 years, and I can't wait to see what we will all accomplish in the future. I'll be watching the news. <laughs> I would like to end by saying a tremendous thank you to our fearless leader, Mrs. Zaghi. We couldn't have planned an amazing Shabbaton and Deep Creek trip without you. To senior council members, Shauna, Josh, and Zach, I couldn't, have asked <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better squad. Your enthusiasm and countless hours spent working towards our great events and amazing senior trip really paid off. Congratulations to my fellow graduates of the class of 2018. We not only did it, but we crushed it. Thank you. And now, soon to be graduates, the moment you have been waiting for, for a long time, the awarding of diplomas. To assist us, I ask Mrs. Sharon Roberts, our upper school dean of faculty and assistant principal, and Mrs. Miriam Zaghi, 12th grade advisor, girls Israel advisor, and much, much more, to join us in the presentation of gifts and diplomas. Back row, please rise. <laughs> Few last minute instructions. All right. Joshua Aaron Levienen. Jenny Rose Melman. <laughs> Ezra Einhorn. Abigail Miriam Orlovsky. <laughs> Ellie Eric Kaldar. Shana Leora Lowenstein. <laughs> Kenneth Milton Book. <laughs> Abigail Sarah Pinchot. Dove Kosowski.
Eliana Elikin. <laughs> Jason Dunn. <laughs> Jordan Lamar. Nessia Liat Sheer Eli. Yonatan Magenzo Bahar. Eliana Miriam Lebson. Nathaniel Tony Levison. Miriam Siegel. <laughs> Eliezer Bencion Heller. Sheva Grayson. <laughs> Idan Jonah Friedman. Sharona Margalit Guggenheim. <laughs> Casey Jonah Fuller. <laughs> Sarah Kayla Konofsky. Zev Gabriel Roberts. <laughs> Jessica Rayna Werbin. Netanel Micha Shields. Michelle Nicole Salt.
Jacob Zachary Offer. Adina Yehudit Fleischer. Ruven Lev Kotz. Nava Naomi Hamdi. Jacob Thur Melkin. Leora Chaya Trencher. Jacob Dove Cohen. Shani Sukal. Benzion Yitzchak Kot. Samuel Rubin Merzel. <laughs> Zachary Akiva Fogel. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Berman class of 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2018, 5778. Shet Abi Mori, Imi Morati, honored rabbis, parents, colleagues, and guests. To my dear graduates, Mazal Tov. As some of you likely remember, we moved to Kent Mill when you were starting fourth grade. Of course, I knew some of you earlier from the Baltimore days. <laughs> One of you significantly earlier. And some of you have joined the class of 2018 since. It has been a pleasure to watch each of you learn and grow into the accomplished young men and women before us today. I would like to speak to you this, to you this evening about a unique gift which you have been given by your parents, by your school, and ultimately from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from God himself, and that is the gift of Torah. Your years at Berman have given you access to the fundamental texts of our faith, not simply to exercise your intellectual prowess, but to guide you through life. Some of you may remember that we noted in our studies of Sefer Vayikra that the word Torah, as it is featured in Parshat Tzav, 
and in other places as well, means an instruction manual. And indeed, the Torah is an instruction manual for life. Since life is significantly more complicated than assembling a piece of furniture or the like, our instruction manual is complex, may seem convoluted, its messages are not always obvious, and are sometimes even debated for centuries. Nonetheless, it is meant to, and has, guided us for millennia in how to live a life of divine service, of Avodat Hashem. I would like to review some of the overarching messages included in our Tanakh about our place and role in the world. This should sound familiar to those of you with whom I've had the privilege of learning Tanakh over the past four years, but I do believe that Chazara reviewing our studies is a worthwhile practice. The Chumash begins with Sefer Breshit, the book of Genesis, in which we are introduced to a worldview which is remarkably different from the ancient pagan world and the secular perspective many hold nowadays. In its opening chapter, we meet a God who completely transcends nature and creates humanity in his image with the expectation that we too can transcend nature, that we can live godly lives. Humanity fails to live up to this lofty expectation, and after flooding out the world and starting over, God resolves to work with what he has and makes a brit, a covenant, with Avram Avinu, our forefather Abraham. For I have known him so that he will command his children and household after him, and they will keep the path of Hashem to do righteousness and justice. Abraham is chosen to found a nation which will follow the path of Hashem, and that path will be one of promoting righteousness and justice in this world. We are trained for this job through our suffering in Egypt, as described in Sefer Shmot, the book of Exodus. We are saved from slavery to receive the Torah, and are taught in Sefer Vayikra, the book of Leviticus, that we are meant to live lives of kedusha, of holiness. This holiness involves temple service, as is detailed in the beginning of the book, but the book continues with the charge of kedoshim to you. You must be holy. As we are reminded again and again by our Nevi'im, our prophets, our temple is a means towards an end, not an end in itself. It is a reminder of our mission to serve God in all walks of life. The temporary form of the temple, the Mishkan or tabernacle, which we carried with us throughout the wilderness from Egypt to Israel, was at the center of our camp and was meant to center us, orienting us to our true purpose. The challenge of maintaining that orientation is clear in Sefer Bim and Bar, the book of Numbers, as we attempt to move forward toward the second purpose of the Exodus, arriving in the land of Israel. A number of episodes demonstrate that we need more training before we are ready for that next step, and a new generation is raised in the Midbar, in the wilderness, poised to finally fulfill this purpose. Indeed, when we get to Sefer Tvarim, Deuteronomy, we are on the verge of entering what will become Israel, and our great leader Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, wants to be sure we understand the reason for our journey and what we are meant to accomplish upon entering the land. In a series of speeches before his death, he reminds us that we are meant to set up a model society in Eretz Yisrael, that, that because we were oppressed as slaves, we understand what it means to be an outcast, and we are meant to set up a society which cares for the poor, for the stranger, for the widow, for the orphan. To the extent that we accomplish that goal, we are given the privilege of possession of Eretz Yisrael. But Israel is a tricky place to live. It comes with strings attached. We are expected to maintain a level of kedusha of holiness and morality in the way we live our lives. We need to remember that we were slaves in Egypt, implying that our freedom comes along with the responsibility of serving God by caring for others. And if we fail in this expectation, we will be returned to Egypt, either literally or through the oppression of Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel, by other foreign powers. In a cycle which repeats itself, we do fail, and we are exiled. But our story continues, because embedded in the narrative I just reviewed are laws, which are further developed in our Torah Shabbat Peh. Which are further developed in our Torah Shabbat Peh, our oral tradition. These laws teach us in great detail what we mean by holiness, and what we mean by morality, 
And the observance of these laws enables us to maintain our identity and continue to strive to fulfill the purpose for which we have been created. This is the gift that has been given to you, to each of you. You are individuals with different life circumstances, unique talents, and challenges, but you share a heritage as part of the nation of Israel, Morashah Kilat Yaakov. You have each begun to forge your own path within this collective identity and should be proud of your accomplishments and contributions which have enhanced our school, the greater Jewish community, and the world at large. This gift of Torah is yours to cherish. It cannot be taken away from you, but you must choose to accept it. Every morning, Jews around the world say a bracha, a blessing, thanking Hashem for this gift. La'asok b'divrei Torah, to occupy ourselves with the words of Torah. We continue by beseeching God to sweeten these words in our mouths. V'niya nachnu, v'tzatzainu, v'tzatzei amcha beit Yisrael, kulanu yodei shemecha, v'lomdei Torah techa l'shma. And we and our offspring and the offspring of your nation, the house of Israel, will all be ones who know your name and learn your Torah for its sake. Every morning when I say this bracha, I think of you, my offspring and the offspring of Am Yisrael, my dear students and beloved children, praying that you do accept this gift, choosing a life of purpose and meaning through Avodat Hashem, serving our Creator. It's okay, Rabbi Trencher, you can put the game back on. <laughs> on behalf of the Board of Directors and the Berman Alumni Association, and on behalf of 74 years of Berman graduates to whose vast and varied tapestry you are now added, whose legacy you now inherit, whose example you are now entrusted to uphold, and whose pathways of connection and support and camaraderie forged in shared experiences and shared values, you are now invited to tread. And with overwhelming gratitude to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Chavre, this is it. It's my honor and privilege to ask you to please move your tassels from right to left, 2018 Berman Hebrew Academy graduates! Mazel Tov, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. Please remain at your seats until after the graduates exit the auditorium. Tilat Marv will begin in approximately three minutes in the Alexander Ravine Bohm Beit Midrash, and the collation will be in the Ethel S. Lerner cafeteria. Before we end this evening, I would like to give a special thank you to Ms. Amy Fanning, our incredible upper school administrative assistant and graduation coordinator. Thank you also to members of the coalition committee Mazel tov, and have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Graduates, please rise.
day.